The compact car segment was once dominated by Japanese vehicles such as the Honda Civic and the Toyota Corolla. If you wanted something that was American, you were left with a vehicle that was something of an afterthought as the domestic manufacturers focused most of their attention on trucks and SUVs. Well, that all changed in the US when high gas prices arrived. It essentially forced the domestic manufacturers to catch up in the C segment. One of the first vehicles to do that was the Ford Focus. It's actually been in the US since 1999 as a 2000 model. And when this third generation came out last year, it helped push the Focus to the top of the class. So what were some of those reasons? Let's find out. Now, for those of you who had the previous generation Focus and haven't had a chance to actually take a look at the new one, I want you to forget everything you knew about the previous Focus. Now, the Ford Focus nameplate has actually been in the U.S. since 1999, late 99. It came to the U.S. as an early 2000. It replaced the even more lackluster Ford Escort as the compact car offering in Ford's lineup. Now, when the Focus first came out, it was instantly a hit for Ford. It sold a lot. It was a really good handling vehicle. Interior quality and, you know, reliability weren't up to the Japanese par, but Ford kind of started to fix that when they introduced the second generation model in 2008. Now, this third generation model debuted last year as a 2012 model. It's been on the market for a little over a year now. For 2013, Ford chose to update the vehicle slightly, just in, the term, in terms of packaging and trim levels. Uh, this hatchback configuration that I have is an SE. This is the lowest trim you can get on the hatchback. The sedan is available in an even cheaper S model. It's kind of designed to compete with like a Toyota Corolla CE, which isn't even available anymore, or a Honda Civic DX, which is also not available anymore. Um, the hatchback is available in two trims. This is, I'm talking about a standard Focus. There's the SE hatchback and the titanium. Uh, there's no more SEL trim, which was available last year. Ford got rid of that. And then the ST and the Focus Electric, they'll be reviewed separately. I already have several ST videos out. Now the SE model, you can see this one's a base SE. There's an upgrade package on the SE called the SE Appearance Package, also known as 201A. This one doesn't have it. You can see those 16 inch wheels actually come standard equipment on the SE, no more hubcaps. If you choose the Super Fuel Economy Package, you get those ugly hubcaps back. You can see this one does not have fog lights. If you get the 201A Appearance Package, it comes with fog lights. Now looking at the window sticker of this particular model, you can see it's a really good value. It's priced at $21,000. Uh, 780 bucks. Let's see, this one is actually a rare five speed manual. It's uh, rated at 2636. It's not really that rare. Ford actually has been listening to a lot of its customers, and you can get a five speed all the way up on the titanium. You can see in terms of options, this one's the new ruby red exterior color for 2013. This one also happens to have the winter package and the moonroof. It's a really good value at 21,780. It kind of competes in the line with um, a Honda Civic EX, although this one does not have a backup camera or rear disc brakes. If you got the 201A up upgrade package, it comes with the disc brakes, but the Focus Titanium is the one that comes standard with a backup camera. Now the interior of the Ford Focus has been significantly upgraded from the previous generation model. Uh, you can see stepping inside the vehicle is pretty easy, although you do have to duck your head slightly because of the styling of this vehicle. The lower roof kind of just can get your head if you don't watch it. Um, here's the key for the Ford Focus. It's Ford's, you know, older key system. It's not like the switchblade key that's on the Fusion. The titanium is available with push button start. Um, it's the only trim that comes standard with it. So this is an SE, so it does not have it. You can see here, you have that little LCD screen in between the gauges and you have a smaller 4.2 inch LCD right here because this one does not have the My4 Touch. You can see the vehicle starts right up. This has a new engine for Ford that they introduced last year, their two liter uh, direct injection engine. I'll get to that later. You can see this one has the five speed manual. Um, last year you could only get it on the SE and the S. Ford has now made it available on S, SE, and Titanium, so it's really good that they're listening to all their customers. It is down a gear compared to the competition. Everyone else kind of has six-speed manuals now, except Honda, which still uses a five-speed, or Toyota, which uses a five-speed as well. The interior of the Ford Focus, I want to say, is one of the best in class. I mean, you have soft-touch materials on the dash. This whole dash design is soft-touch. It feels really high quality as well. However, depending on the trim level, um, you either get soft or hard-touch plastics. You choose a Titanium. This is is soft touch. However, this is an SE, so it's hard touch plastic. Um, an S model actually won't have the silver accents and the steering wheel audio controls like this SE does, but the silver, the silver accents really brighten up a very dark cabin. The window is automatic down for the driver only. If you choose the 201A upgrade package, 
or I'm sorry, the titanium. Um, it'll have automatic up-down for all four, and you kind of get gypped with the SC a little bit. You also get manual zone climate control. You can get dual zone climate control if you get the 201A upgrade package, and the My4 Touch is kind of a two packages you have to add on. You can see this one has the standard, you know, Ford sound system with their sync. No My4 Touch, you got a smaller, about half the size of the My4 Touch screen. You can see all these buttons here are weirdly laid out. Um, they kind of would take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, I probably think that it's not hard to get used to this. However, it's kind of lined up in a way like an old phone was, and you can see it's got soft, bu soft buttons here that kind of correspond to what's on the screen right there. I'm not really a fan of this design, but I would prefer this over the My4 Touch just because for me, this kind of car would be, you know, a simple commuter car. Now, looking at this center console here, this one has the winter package, so it comes with heated seats, power outlet right there. You have an armrest right here, center console with your USB, your you know, auxiliary inject there. Nicely padded um, armrest right here. The seats on this cloth model are a nice two-tone design. I'm not a fan of the scratchy fabric design, but it's very comfortable. I probably would prefer the leather. You can see this one has the moonroof, which is a much bigger size moonroof than the Fiesta. And um, you can see the headliner in here is also a really nice material as well. Now, as a compact car, the Focus's back seat is definitely a little bit behind. It's uh, on the smaller side for the class. Um, you can see here, step-in is a little bit difficult. You have to duck your head slightly. There's no vents back here. You do get a power outlet. And this, the bench seat themselves actually are not bad. There's pretty good thigh support here. Uh, the legroom is a tad tight um, just because, I mean, the Honda Civic, the Volkswagen Jetta offers more space. You can get an armrest here. It's on uh, the 201A upgrade package or the titanium models, and these seats do fold 60-40. You can see the materials back here are the same materials from the front, hard touch plastic, hard plastic here, and it's unfortunately hard right there where the front seats where it's uh, soft touch plastics. Now the one, my favorite feature about the Focus is the fact that it's available with a hatchback. I really wish Honda would uh, bring back a Civic hatchback. Anyways, you know, in terms of the space in here, um, it's pretty class competitive. It's on line with like a Mazda 3. Um, you can fold the seats down. They do fold down 60-40 split. Um, and you do have this nice cargo cover. If you get the titanium trim, uh, you'll get a subwoofer there with the Sony audio system that kind of eats into the space. I probably would recommend a rear bumper applique to protect that bumper as it looks like it might get in the way when you are loading your stuff. of the new Ford Focus, you'll find a new engine for this model. It's Ford's two-liter uh, naturally aspirated direct injection engine. This is their GDI engine. Kind of think of it as the ST's motor without the turbo bolted onto it. Uh, you can see it, you can hear it ticking away. It makes about 160 horsepower and 146 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, with a super fuel economy package, you can get up to 40 miles per gallon. However, this is just a 5 speed manual. It gets up to 36. However, it does have more power than the competition, so let's take a look at how it drives with the 5 speed manual. So I personally think that this particular Focus that I'm driving makes an excellent new commuter car. Let's take a look and see what those reasons are. Reason one because it's a five speed. I know, it's so predictable. I was gonna say that, of course. But no, the, the current Focus is really easy to drive. And you know, most of the videos you probably are used to seeing are the ones uh, with the uh, six speed dual clutch. But you know, as a, as a commuter car that you are looking, you know, that's low maintenance, easy to drive, uh, the Focus with a stick is hard to pass up. Um, anyways, in terms of the visibility, the Focus is pretty easy to see out of. You do have a little bit of a thicker pillar here. Uh, you can't really see the, where the front bumper is or anything like that, but the hood's really low, so you can you don't have to look over that anyways. And uh, the seats in this vehicle are also very comfortable. There's just a, a nice you know feeling of maneuverability and visibility in this car still. Now the five speed in this car is excellent. Uh, if you guys are you know looking to trade out of your older you know, Honda Civic with a five-speed. Um, the Focus, I'm, I will happily recommend the Focus for several reasons. For one, if you guys are like me and you don't like the LX model, um, the Focus is probably the only way to go because Honda got rid of the EX model or the EX sedan with a stick in the US. If you want an EX uh, with a stick, you're gonna have to go with the coupe. I don't like coupes, so this fact that this is a hatchback with a stick, I can get it on the higher trims, um, is probably one of the reasons why I would choose you know, this car over a Honda Civic if I was looking for a stick. Um, 
Another thing is, the way this car drives, the steering is just incredibly sharp, direct, gives you pretty good feedback. This is just a really fun car to drive. And the engine has pretty good pull. I mean, this is a compact car. It's not gonna overwhelm you with power. That's what the ST is for. But you know, as just the base engine, this thing is much more powerful than a uh, Corolla or a Honda Civic. It's pretty much in the league with the uh, Mazda 3 in that regard. Now the clutch in this vehicle is extremely light. It has really good feel also. The engagement point is right in the middle of the travel, the perfect engagement point. This would also be an excellent car to you know, teach someone how to drive a stick. The shifter has really nice positive throws. Um, it just snicks, snicks into the gears. It's not as good as Honda's shifter. Still, Honda makes the best one, but this one is better than, you know, um, Toyota shifter or Hyundai shifter, without a doubt. It's probably in the same league with the Volkswagen shifters. I like the shifter in this car. My only gripe is it's missing a six gear. That's six gear that would really, you know, bring the revs down, bring the gas mileage up from 36 in the city. That's pretty much the only thing. The quietness in the, this car is also excellent. There's very little road noise, very little engine noise. I mean, the, there is a little bit of positive engine noise. but um, it doesn't have any buzz that you kind of associate. Like for example, Hyundai's 1.8 liter four cylinder has that you know, four cylinder buzz. This car doesn't really have it. It really enjoys being at the higher ranges of, uh, ranges of its revs and it sounds great you know, doing it. Now being this is a compact car, the turning radius is expectedly very tight. You can see power is pretty, it's not even adequate, it's pretty sprightly actually. So anyways, if you guys are in the market for a new compact car and you want a stick shift, you want it to just be kind of a simple DD, you know, this Focus equipped like this is probably one of the perfect vehicles to choose from. The only thing it's missing for me is fog lights and satellite radio. And you're really your only choices if you want a hatchback like this with a stick is this vehicle and the Mazda 3. I mean, for me, I just don't do sedans, but I like this hatchback design very much. So if you guys are in the market for something like this, make sure you check out Ford's Focus hatchback, especially equipped like this. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all later.